Chapter 13 The Lord spoke to Moses and to Aaron, saying, When a man shall have a rising in his body's skin, or a scab, or a bright spot, and it becomes in the skin of his body the plague of leprosy, then he shall be brought to Aaron the priest, or to one of his sons the priest. And the priest shall examine the plague in the skin of his body, and if the hair in the plague is turned white, and the appearance of the plague is deeper than the body's skin, it is the plague of leprosy, and the priest shall examine him, and pronounce him unclean. If the bright spot is white in the skin of his body, and the appearance of it isn't deeper than the skin, and the hair of it hasn't turned white, then the priest shall isolate the infected person for seven days. The priest shall examine him on the seventh day, and behold, if in his eyes the plague is arrested, and the plague hasn't spread in the skin, then the priest shall isolate him for seven more days. The priest shall examine him again on the seventh day, and behold, if the plague is faded, and the plague hasn't spread in the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him clean, it is a scab. He shall wash his clothes and be clean. But if the scab spreads on the skin, after he has shown himself to the priest for his cleansing, he shall show himself to the priest again. The priest shall examine him, and behold, if the scab is spread on the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean, it is leprosy. When the plague of leprosy is in a man, then he shall be brought to the priest, and the priest shall examine him. Behold, if there is a white rising in the skin, and it has turned the hair white, and there is raw flesh in the rising, it is a chronic leprosy in the skin of his body, and the priest shall pronounce him unclean. He shall not isolate him, for he is unclean. If the leprosy breaks out all over the skin, and the leprosy covers all the skin of the infected person, from his head even to his feet, as far as it appears to the priest, then the priest shall examine him, and behold, if the leprosy has covered all his flesh, he shall pronounce him clean of the plague. It has all turned white, he is clean. But whenever raw flesh appears in him, he shall be unclean. The priest shall examine the raw flesh, and pronounce him unclean. The raw flesh is unclean, it is leprosy. Or if the raw flesh turns again and is changed to white, then he shall come to the priest, and the priest shall examine him, and behold, if the plague is turned white, then the priest shall pronounce him clean of the plague, he is clean. When the body has a boil on its skin and it is healed, and in the place of the boil there is a white rising, or a bright spot, reddish-white, then it shall be shown to the priest, and the priest shall examine it, and behold, if the appearance of it is lower than the skin, and the hair of it is turned white, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean, it is the plague of leprosy, it has broken out in the boil. But if the priest examines it, and behold, there are no white hairs in it, and it isn't deeper than the skin but is dim, then the priest shall isolate him seven days. If it spreads in the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean, it is a plague. But if the bright spot stays in its place and hasn't spread, it is the scar from the boil, and the priest shall pronounce him clean. Or when the body has a burn from fire on its skin, and the raw flesh of the burn becomes a bright spot, reddish-white or white, then the priest shall examine it, and behold, if the hair in the bright spot is turned white, and the appearance of it is deeper than the skin, it is leprosy. It has broken out in the burning, and the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is the plague of leprosy. But if the priest examines it, and behold, there is no white hair in the bright spot, and it isn't lower than the skin, but is faded, then the priest shall isolate him seven days. The priest shall examine him on the seventh day. If it has spread in the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is the plague of leprosy. If the bright spot stays in its place and hasn't spread in the skin, but is faded, it is the swelling from the burn, and the priest shall pronounce him clean, for it is the scar from the burn. When a man or a woman has a plague on the head or on the beard, then the priest shall examine the plague, and behold, if the appearance of it is deeper than the skin, and the hair in it is yellow and thin, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is an itch. It is leprosy of the head or of the beard. If the priest examines the plague of itching, and behold, its appearance isn't deeper than the skin, and there is no black hair in it, 
then the priest shall isolate the person infected with itching seven days. On the seventh day the priest shall examine the plague, and behold, if the itch hasn't spread, and there is no yellow hair in it, and the appearance of the itch isn't deeper than the skin, then he shall be shaved, but he shall not shave the itch, and the priest shall shut him up who has the itch seven more days. On the seventh day the priest shall examine the itch, and behold, if the itch hasn't spread in the skin, and its appearance isn't deeper than the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him clean, he shall wash his clothes, and be clean. But if the itch spreads in the skin after his cleansing, then the priest shall examine him, and behold, if the itch is spread in the skin, the priest shall not look for the yellow hair, he is unclean. But if in his eyes the itch is arrested, and black hair has grown in it, the itch is healed, he is clean, the priest shall pronounce him clean. When a man or a woman has bright spots in the skin of the body, even white, bright spots, then the priest shall examine them. And behold, if the bright spots on the skin of their body are a dull white, it is a harmless rash. It has broken out in the skin, he is clean. If a man's hair has fallen from his head, he is bald, he is clean. If his hair has fallen off from the front part of his head, he is forehead bald, he is clean. But if there is in the bald head or the bald forehead a reddish-white plague, it is leprosy breaking out in his bald head or his bald forehead. Then the priest shall examine him, and behold, if the rising of the plague is reddish-white in his bald head or in his bald forehead, like the appearance of leprosy in the skin of the flesh, he is a leprous man, he is unclean. The priest shall surely pronounce him unclean, his plague is on his head. The leper in whom the plague is shall wear torn clothes, and the hair of his head shall hang loose. He shall cover his upper lip and shall cry, Unclean, unclean. All the days in which the plague is in him he shall be unclean. He is unclean. He shall dwell alone. Outside of the camp shall be his dwelling. The garment also that the plague of leprosy is in, whether it is a woolen garment or a linen garment, whether it is in warp or woof of linen or of wool, whether in a skin or in anything made of skin. If the plague is greenish or reddish in the garment or in the skin or in the warp or in the woof or in anything made of skin, it is the plague of leprosy and shall be shown to the priest. The priest shall examine the plague and isolate the plague seven days. He shall examine the plague on the seventh day. If the plague is spread in the garment, either in the warp or in the woof or in the skin, Whatever use the skin is used for, the plague is a destructive mildew, it is unclean. He shall burn the garment, whether the warp or the woof, in wool or in linen, or anything of skin in which the plague is, for it is a destructive mildew, it shall be burned in the fire. If the priest examines it, and behold the plague hasn't spread in the garment, either in the warp, or in the woof, or in anything of the skin, then the priest shall command that they wash the thing in which the plague is, and he shall isolate it seven more days. Then the priest shall examine it, after the plague is washed, and behold, if the plague hasn't changed its color, and the plague hasn't spread, it is unclean, you shall burn it in the fire. It is a mildewed spot, whether the bareness is inside or outside. If the priest looks, and behold, the plague has faded after it is washed, then he shall tear it out of the garment, or out of the skin, or out of the warp, or out of the woof. And if it appears again in the garment, either in the warp, or in the woof, or in anything of skin, it is spreading. You shall burn with fire that in which the plague is. The garment, either the warp, or the woof, or whatever thing of skin it is, which you shall wash, if the plague has departed from them, then it shall be washed the second time, and it will be clean. This is the law of the plague of mildew in a garment of wool or linen, either in the warp or the woof or in anything of skin, to pronounce it clean or to pronounce it unclean. Chapter 14 The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, This shall be the law of the leper in the day of his cleansing. He shall be brought to the priest and the priest shall go forth out of the camp. The priest shall examine him, 
And behold, if the plague of leprosy is healed in the leper, then the priest shall command them to take for him who is to be cleansed two living clean birds, and cedar wood, and scarlet and hyssop. The priest shall command them to kill one of the birds in an earthen vessel over running water. As for the living bird, he shall take it, and the cedar wood, and the scarlet, and the hyssop, and shall dip them, and the living bird in the blood of the bird that was killed, over the running water. He shall sprinkle on him who is to be cleansed from the leprosy seven times, and shall pronounce him clean, and shall let the living bird go into the open field. He who is to be cleansed shall wash his clothes, and shave off all his hair, and bathe himself in water, and he shall be clean. After that he shall come into the camp, but shall dwell outside his tent seven days. It shall be on the seventh day that he shall shave off all his hair off his head, and his beard and his eyebrows, even all his hair he shall shave off. He shall wash his clothes, and he shall bathe his body in water, then he shall be clean. On the eighth day he shall take two male lambs without blemish, and one ewe lamb a year old without blemish, and three-tenths of an ephah of fine flour, for a meal offering, mingled with oil, and one log of oil. The priest who cleanses him shall set the man who is to be cleansed, and those things before the Lord at the door of the tent of meeting. The priest shall take one of the male lambs, and offer him for a trespass offering, with the log of oil and wave them for a wave offering before the Lord. He shall kill the male lamb in the place where they kill the sin offering and the burn offering, in the place of the sanctuary. For as the sin offering is the priest, so is the trespass offering, it is most holy. The priest shall take some of the blood of the trespass offering, and the priest shall put it on the tip of the right ear of him who is to be cleansed, and on the thumb of his right hand, and on the big toe of his right foot. The priest shall take some of the log of oil and pour it into the palm of his own left hand. The priest shall dip his right finger in the oil that is in his left hand and shall sprinkle some of the oil with his finger seven times before the Lord. The priest shall put some of the rest of the oil that is in his hand on the tip of the right ear of him who is to be cleansed and on the thumb of his right hand and on the big toe of his right foot upon the blood of the trespass offering. The rest of the oil that is in the priest's hand he shall put on the head of him who is to be cleansed, and the priest shall make atonement for him before the Lord. The priest shall offer the sin offering and make atonement for him who is to be cleansed because of his uncleanness, and afterward he shall kill the burnt offering. The priest shall offer the burnt offering and the meal offering on the altar. The priest shall make atonement for him and he shall be clean. If he is poor and can afford so much, then he shall take one male lamb for a trespass offering to be waved, to make atonement for him, and one-tenth of an ephah of fine flour mingled with oil for a meal offering, and a log of oil, and two turtle doves, or two young pigeons, such as he is able to afford, and the one shall be a sin offering, and the other a burn offering. On the eighth day he shall bring them for his cleansing to the priest to the door of the tent of meeting before the Lord. The priest shall take the lamb of the trespass offering and the log of oil, and the priest shall wave them for a wave offering before the Lord. He shall kill the lamb of the trespass offering. The priest shall take some of the blood of the trespass offering and put it on the tip of the right ear of him who is to be cleansed, and on the thumb of his right hand, and on the big toe of his right foot. The priest shall pour some of the oil into the palm of his own left hand, and the priest shall sprinkle with his right finger some of the oil that is in his left hand seven times before the Lord. Then the priest shall put some of the oil that is in his hand on the tip of the right ear of him who is to be cleansed, and on the thumb of his right hand, and on the big toe of his right foot, on the place of the blood of the trespass offering. The rest of the oil that is in the priest's hand he shall put on the head of him who was to be cleansed, to make atonement for him before the Lord. He shall offer one of the turtle doves, or of the young pigeons, such as he is able to afford, even such as he is able to afford the one for a sin offering, and the other for a burn offering, with the meal offering. The priest shall make atonement for him who is to be cleansed before the Lord. This is the law for him in whom is the plague of leprosy, who is not able to afford the sacrifice for his cleansing.
The Lord spoke to Moses and to Aaron, saying, When you have come into the land of Canaan, which I give to you for a possession, and I put a spreading mildew in a house in the land of your possession, then he who owns the house shall come and tell the priest, saying, There seems to me to be some sort of plague in the house. The priest shall command that they empty the house before the priest goes in to examine the plague, that all that is in the house not be made unclean. And afterward the priest shall go in to inspect the house. He shall examine the plague. And behold, if the plague is in the walls of the house with hollow streaks, greenish or reddish, and it appears to be deeper than the wall, then the priest shall go out of the house to the door of the house and shut up the house seven days. The priest shall come again on the seventh day and look. If the plague is spread in the walls of the house, then the priest shall command that they take out the stones in which is the plague and cast them into an unclean place outside the city. And he shall cause the inside of the house to be scraped round about, and they shall pour out the mortar that they scraped off outside of the city into an unclean place. They shall take other stones and put them in the place of those stones, and he shall take other mortar and shall plaster the house. If the plague comes again and breaks out in the house after he has taken out the stones and after he has scraped the house and after it was plastered, then the priest shall come in and look. And behold, if the plague is spread in the house, it is a destructive mildew in the house, it is unclean. He shall break down the house, its stones and its timber, and all the house's mortar. He shall carry them out of the city into an unclean place. Moreover, he who goes into the house while it is shut up shall be unclean until the evening. He who lies down in the house shall wash his clothes, and he who eats in the house shall wash his clothes. If the priest shall come in and examine it, and behold, the plague hasn't spread in the house after the house was plastered, then the priest shall pronounce the house clean, because the plague is healed. To cleanse the house he shall take two birds, and cedar wood, and scarlet, and hyssop. He shall kill one of the birds in an earthen vessel over running water. He shall take the cedar wood, and the hyssop, and the scarlet, and the living bird, and dip them in the blood of the slain bird, and in the running water, and sprinkle the house seven times. He shall cleanse the house with the blood of the bird, and with the running water with the living bird, with the cedar wood, with the hyssop, and with the scarlet. But he shall let the living bird go out of the city into the open field, so shall he make atonement for the house, and it shall be clean. This is the law for any plague of leprosy, and for an itch, and for the destructive mildew of a garment, and for a house, and for a rising, and for a scab, and for a bright spot, to teach when it is unclean, and when it is clean. This is the law of leprosy. He entered again into the synagogue. And there was a man there who had his hand withered. They watched him whether he would heal him on the Sabbath day, that they might accuse him. He said to the man who had his hand withered, Stand up. He said to them, Is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do harm, to save a life or to kill? But they were silent. When he had looked around at them with anger, being grieved at the hardening of their hearts, he said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and his hand was restored as healthy as the other. The Pharisees went out and immediately conspired with the Herodians against him how they might destroy him. Jesus withdrew to the sea with his disciples, and a great multitude followed him from Galilee, from Judea, from Jerusalem, from Idumea, beyond the Jordan, and those from around Tyre and Sidon. A great multitude, hearing what great things he did, came to him. He spoke to his disciples that a little boat should stay near him because of the crowd, so that they wouldn't press on him. For he had healed many, so that as many as had diseases pressed on him that they might touch him. The unclean spirits, whenever they saw him, fell down before him and cried, You are the Son of God. He sternly warned them that they should not make him known. He went up into the mountain and called to himself those whom he wanted, and they went to him. He appointed twelve that they might be with him, and that he might send them out to preach, and to have authority to heal sicknesses and to cast out demons. Simon, to whom he gave the name Peter, James the son of Zebedee, John the brother of James, and he surnamed them Boanerges, which means sons of thunder, Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, 
James, the son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. He came into a house. The multitude came together again, so that they could not so much as eat bread. When his friends heard it, they went out to seize him, for they said, He is insane. The scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He has Beelzebul, and by the prince of demons he cast out the demons. He summoned them and said to them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. If a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. If Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he can't stand but has an end. But no one can enter into the house of the strong man to plunder unless he first binds the strong man, and then he will plunder his house. Most assuredly, I tell you, all of the sons of men's sins will be forgiven them, including their blasphemies with which they may blaspheme. But whoever may blaspheme against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin, because they said he has an unclean spirit. His mother and his brothers came, and standing outside they sent to him, calling him. A multitude was sitting around him, and they told him, Behold, your mother, your brothers, and your sisters are outside looking for you. He answered them, Who are my mother and my brothers? Looking around at those who sat around him, he said, Behold, my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of God, the same is my brother and my sister and mother. Psalm 39 For the chief musician, for Jedithon, a psalm by David. I said I will watch my ways, so that I don't sin with my tongue. I will keep my mouth with a bridle while the wicked is before me. I was mute with silence. I held my peace even from good. My sorrow was stirred. My heart was hot within me. While I meditated, the fire burned. I spoke with my tongue. Yahweh, show me my end. What is the measure of my days? Let me know how frail I am. Behold, you have made my days handbreadths. My lifetime is as nothing before you. Surely every man stands as a breath. Surely every man walks like a shadow. Surely they busy themselves in vain. He heaps up and doesn't know who shall gather. Now, Lord, what do I wait for? My hope is in you. Deliver me from all my transgressions. Don't make me the reproach of the foolish. I was mute. I didn't open my mouth because you did it. Remove your scourge away from me. I am overcome by the blow of your hand. When you rebuke and correct man for iniquity, you consume his wealth like a moth. Surely every man is but a breath. Hear my prayer, Yahweh, and give ear to my cry. Don't be silent at my tears, for I am a stranger with you, a sojourner as all my fathers were. Oh, spare me that I may recover strength before I go away and be no more. One winking with the eye causes sorrow, but a chattering fool will fall. The mouth of the righteous is a spring of life, but violence covers the mouth of the wicked. Hatred stirs up strife, but love covers all wrongs.